We're Tony and Chelsea Northrup, and we're gonna teach you about aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, sometimes called the exposure triangle. Yep, we're not just gonna be telling you which each individual thing does, but how they work together and how they'll impact your photos. So let's first start by putting our cameras into manual mode because you'll be able to follow along if you want. If you don't know how to put your camera in manual mode, we probably have a tutorial for your camera, so look that up and we'll show you how to do it. ISO adjusts your camera's sensitivity to light. So a high ISO, like ISO 6400, will make your photos brighter. A low ISO, like ISO 100, will make your photos darker. Let's take some pictures of Tony at different ISOs and see what the difference is. But first, let's set our cameras to 1 1 25th of a second, f8, and my room's pretty dark. I'm going to start at ISO 800. As you can see, the lower ISOs, like ISO 800, were way too dark. Higher ISOs, like ISO 12800, were far brighter. That's because as the number of your ISO goes higher, it increases the sensitivity to light of your sensor. Notice we're showing you the camera mode and the camera setting for every example. The second time you watch this video, practice by putting these settings in your camera and following along. When you're testing this, you might get different results. ISO 800 might be brighter or darker. That's because your room has different amounts of light. Let's move on to shutter speed and uh, see how that affects our pictures. So as you can see, longer shutter speeds, like 1 30th, kept the shutter open for a longer fraction of a second, letting in more light, producing a brighter picture. Shorter shutter speeds, like 1 4000th, kept the shutter open for such a small fraction of time that the picture turned out too dark. I think I got the right exposure at about 1 250th when I had the ISO and aperture set at those settings. You can either use your shutter speed to freeze motion and make a fast thing still, or to show motion in your photo, like if you want to show the flowing of a waterfall. A fast shutter speed, like one two thousandth of a second, could freeze something very fast, like a flying bird. A slower shutter speed, like one one twenty-fifth of a second, would be adequate for like a portrait or a still life. If you wanted to go even slower and show that motion in a waterfall, you could go to a couple of seconds. And if you slow it down even more, like 30 seconds or longer, you can see beautiful stars in a night sky. If you know how to control your shutter speed, you can take beautiful photos in all different situations. So Tony, let's change our shutter speed now and we'll take pictures of a fan and see how we can freeze the motion of a fan moving or show motion. Okay, I'm going to set my ISO back to auto ISO so that the camera picks the right ISO for the exposure and I'll choose shutter priority to give me control over the shutter speed. Shutter priority is either an S on your dial or a TV. In shutter priority, the camera chooses the aperture setting automatically to keep the picture's brightness the same. This is known as auto exposure. Putting this colorful tape on so we can more easily see where the fan blades are. So I'm gonna start with a slow shutter speed and then put it up faster. At 1 10th, the fan is completely blurred. At 1 50th, we start to see the colors. At 1 200th, the motion is even less pronounced. And at 1 400th, things are starting to look clearer. 1 800th, there's still some motion. 1 3200th, I think there might be a tiny bit of motion. And 1 4000th, I think it's pretty much frozen. That's such a powerful tool as a photographer because it allows you to show or hide motion. One four thousandths would show a picture of a completely still fan, even though it was moving. And a slow shutter speed would show the motion. But you have the power to choose the perfect shutter speed to show just the right amount of motion. It's also a really useful tool to use your shutter speed because in a crowded tourist location, you can set a long exposure on a tripod and blur all of the people out of the photo almost completely so that the place that you're visiting is the main subject. Besides showing motion, slow shutter speeds can introduce camera shake, which is a problem. That is the movement of your hands that appears as movement throughout the entire picture. 
Camera shake's almost always a bad thing, and the solution for it is just using a faster shutter speed or putting your camera on something stable, like a tripod. For detailed information about eliminating camera shake, check out my video about the rule of doubles. I have a quick tip for you that I use all the time. I listen to my shutter because you can hear when it's faster or slower. Try it out. Go to a fast shutter speed, like one two thousandth of a second, and you can hear how fast it sounds. Now go to a slow shutter speed, and you can tell it's slow. It sounds slow. This will be really useful when you're taking pictures and you'll often get good enough to hear the difference and say, oh, this sounds too slow. Let's talk about aperture. Aperture is this little sliding door inside of your lens. When you use a low f-stop number, the aperture is wide open and lets in lots of light. When you use a high f-stop number, the aperture closes down and lets in less and less light. So I bet you can guess which f-stop numbers are going to produce brighter and darker pictures, but let's test it out just to be sure. Let's switch back to manual mode so we can control the exposure. I'll set the shutter speed to 1 250th and the ISO to 12,800, though you might need a different setting depending on how bright your room is. So as you can see, the larger the aperture number, like f11, the darker the photo is. The smaller the aperture number, like f5.6, the brighter it is. That's because a smaller aperture number is letting in more light. If you're a math nerd like me, you can think of it like fractions, because we literally write it f slash 8 or f slash 11. 1 eighth is bigger than 1 eleventh, and f8 is a bigger opening than f11. This is the last one. We're almost done. Okay. The secondary trait of aperture is a blurring the background. So let's take pictures at different f-stops and see the effect. Okay. I'm going to put my camera into aperture priority mode with auto ISO. This allows the camera to pick the perfect shutter speed to properly expose each picture so I can think only about the aperture. At f22, the guitar in the background is completely sharp, but for each lower f-stop number I chose, Chelsea stayed just as sharp, but the background got more and more blurry. This is really useful in photography because sometimes you want to see the background and sometimes the background is ugly and you want to hide it as much as possible. What would you do if you were standing in front of the Eiffel Tower? What f-stop would you choose? Ah, uh, like f8, f16, because I want that tower to be in the picture. What if you're standing in front of a parking lot and you're trying to take a nice portrait of somebody? f28, f4. Yeah, nice and low f-stop numbers. Now, if you want that beautiful wash of color that you see in the background of so many professional portraits, you might need to upgrade from your kit lens. You could see, even though this is an f4 lens, moderately fast, it didn't completely blur it out. But add-on lenses have lower f-stop numbers than other lenses that you can buy. So just pull your lens out of your back pocket this is oh what gosh. they call a nifty 50. It's a 50 millimeter f1.8 and it's available for almost every camera system. So let's use the lower possible f-stop number of this f1.8 and see what those pictures look like. The faster f1.8 lens blurs the background more than the kit lens can, creating this 3D effect that makes Chelsea pop off the background. Of course, with any lens, you have the option of using a higher f-stop number to bring the background into focus. We've been through a lot today. Remember, ISO determines the sensor's sensitivity. Low ISOs, like ISO 100, produce dark pictures when you're taking pictures out in full sun, and high ISOs are perfect for low light conditions, like ISO 6400. Shutter speed determines how long your camera's shutter stays open. Long shutter speeds, like 1 5th of a second, 1 20th of a second, stay open for a long time, gather more light, and produce brighter images. However, as a secondary trait, staying open a long time shows movement or camera shake, which you can use to your advantage when you actually want to show that movement. Third, we covered aperture. Aperture determines how big or small the opening of your lens is. Really big openings have low f-stop numbers and blur the background a lot, but they let in more light. So if you're in a dim room, you probably want to make sure you're using the lowest possible f-stop number. Really high f-stop numbers close the aperture down to a small little pinhole, let in less light, producing a darker picture, but they bring the background in focus. You can remember this saying, high f-stop number, high background sharpness. 
low f-stop number, low background sharpness. Chels, what if people want to learn even more? Oh yeah, I know. Hold on. This is our book. Stunning digital photography. Oh, I'm close to you. And, oh my gosh. And it comes with 20 hours of video. See? And you can learn all about composition, travel photography, landscapes, wildlife. It's all in here. And we're gonna give you 20% off. I swear, just go down to the description below, hit the link and use the coupon code TRIANGLE. Also, you can subscribe to this channel for free and watch more videos. We release them all the time. I demand you subscribe to this channel for free.